we're a G. <laughs> uh, got it. All right. Did you want to talk about Dirty Dominic Mysterio in NXT? Oh my God. Can we talk <laughs> about Dirty Dominic Mysterio? Dirty Dominic Mysterio might be the best performer in wrestling today. Oh he, my God. He and he's a is, ratings draw. He is everything from like the, the going to jail thing, you know? The, oh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The being like the mommy thing. Like he's just so. He like he reminds me a lot of his uncle Eddie. You know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. playing that dirty sleazy I, kid that you just want to punch. Oh, he's so good. I have a theory about Dominic Mysterio and Eddie Guerrero. Um, I think he's okay. So you know how like on screen they've never mm -hmm. really acknowledged the the plot line from years ago on SmackDown where it was revealed that mm -hmm. Eddie Guerrero was actually Dominic's. Uh, father they've just decided like, yeah <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna pretend we didn't do That's, that yeah that didn't happen can't find that on yeah. the network but i feel like dominic is is continuing that storyline if <laughs> only in his own head right yep. he does a bunch of eddie guerrero's moves he's growing his hair out like eddie guerrero yep he his mannerisms are very similar to eddie guerrero so i think he's saying like well you guys can ignore it but in wrestling canon, I'm Eddie Guerrero's son, and I'm going to act like it. <laughs> so, and I'm going to hang out with my friends in this weird goth cult, mm -hmm. and we're just going to run around causing trouble. And he does it, and they do it, and it is so good. We talked a lot about the, the bloodline and how amazing the yeah. bloodline story has been. Somehow WWE managed to catch group lightning in a bottle again. Yeah. Because the yeah. Judgment Day, what they have been doing, has oh, yeah. been so good and it's taken guys four very different wrestlers and four oh, yeah. like yeah. styles and made them all so wonderfully unlikable mm -hmm. in ways that showcase how good they are and it's just like this is good stuff yeah yeah it's one of those things where like it's sort of the dynamic between the four of them and i think part of it is when i watch them i get the feeling that they are having a lot of fun, right? Yes, like, definitely. like they're having a good time. I saw a clip of Rhea Ripley at a house show and Rhea, Rhea Ripley is one of the best wrestlers in the world right mm -hmm. now. Like, like, like she's just such a, a great character. So I saw a clip of her at a house show and she'd gotten thrown to the outside and she was such a, an Owen Hart type heel <laughs> that she reached out and there was a, a a fan they had their shoe out she just reached out and just untied the guy's shoe it <laughs> <laughs> was so awesome like, ah, you couldn't do that him. on tv because of the hockey boards yeah, yeah i was like that's such a thing that owen hart would have done like that's you amazing. know back back in the day and it's those uh, little touches you know it's like a, a few months ago when there was that clip of Roman Reigns going around and there was like a little kid in the front row at a house show and mm. Roman kept like giving him side eye and pretending to be a little nervous and scared of him. Yeah. yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, that stuff is great. and It doesn't hurt his character at all. It doesn't whatever. It just know. adds to the performance of it. It's fantastic. Yeah. And and I, I get that from like all four of them. Like I feel it's re sort of revived Finn Balor a lot too. Definitely. Right? Like um yeah he was treading water yeah he was like he was definitely is like here's this guy who's awesome but vince doesn't like him so you know it's like okay well we got six months there with no vince now vince is back but like in this yeah, yeah. It, it's working on a wwe level and yeah. and I, in a wwe context where they're looking at things like merch sales and ratings yeah, and things like that yeah, yeah, yeah. and that's what's determining determining that's what's <laughs> the dominating that's what's <laughs> determining your position in the card not how good of a wrestler you are oh right? yeah and like i don't know if you've been following the ratings but this mm -hmm. week nxt is doing the best ratings nxt has ever done and it's mm -hmm. been kind of since judgment day has been sort of playing a role and especially since uh dominant been... new... yeah north one... american champion so Sorry. he had Dominic had the highest rated segments on Raw and SmackDown this mm -hmm. week, or sorry Raw and NXT this week, and yeah. yeah. So like, 
And I feel like I feel kind of weird because when I heard the rumors that, oh, they're going to do this feud between Ray and his son, Dominic, I remember thinking that's stupid. No one's ever going to believe that. That's so dumb. What, are you going to believe that, like, you know, Dominic Mysterio is going to turn on his dad who's done all this? And then it's, like, one of the best storylines they've done in 20 Mm -hmm. years, you know? Like, just perfect. Dominic is a fantastic heel. Yeah. Um, And he's just, like, I mean, obviously, like, people were giving him all this heat because he had turned on Ray and everybody loved Ray. But, like, through those crowd reactions, he's turned into an amazing performer. Yeah. Um, you know, he's, he's turned into that unto himself as well. He's not just like, yeah, we're not just looking at it now. Like, oh yeah, it's Ray Mysterio's kid. I get it. Yeah. 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 And no, he's so different than being Ray Mysterio's. Kid. Well, first of all, he's Eddie Guerrero's kid. Well, yes. yeah, as we've determined. But like he does so many of it, you know, he'll do the uh, the three amigos. He does the sort of springboard mm-hmm. sent on. He does so many Eddie Guerrero isms, um, which is really, you know, just I mean, ob- obviously, if wrestling can get more Eddie Guerrero's, the better. Right. <laughs> Not upset by that at all. But kind of good at the wrestling. Yeah. And and here's the thing, too. And maybe it shouldn't come as a surprise, given his his parentage in or out of kayfabe. Um, mm-hmm. But Dominic's a pretty good wrestler. Yeah, yeah. For a guy who really didn't have like a long formal training and like indie run, and I'm not sure if he even did anything in the indies or if it just kind of came together with WWE and started no, training. He never, there. He never like, did anything outside. Well, he trained like he trained with Lance Storm. Mm-hmm. I think he trained like he trained with some other camps too. But then he basically just went to WWE and tied with his dad. Yeah. Like I'm yeah, sure he's... he's been messing around in wrestling rings for most of his life, but like in yeah. terms of like yeah. actual training. Yeah. Like very, I mean, little once he was suspended didn't... high above one, he got a really good. Well, look. yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> he was a stipulation <laughs> in a match at one point. How many yeah. people can say that? How many North yeah. American champions can say they were a stipulation in a match? once? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Hopefully not any, honestly, but I <laughs> imagine it has happened in some way. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if anyone brings that up backstage too, because I know they don't acknowledge it on TV or whatever, but I wonder if every now and again, everyone's just like, Hey man, you've been on a pole lately or, you know, something <laughs> funny. <laughs> uh, speaking of people's kids though, uh, yeah. free agent alert. Oh yeah. Those of you playing in GM mode. Um, Brian Pillman Jr. done with AEW and was at the Performance Center, quote unquote, working out. Mm-hmm. I don't really understand. Like, do, do people that don't work at WWE just walk up to it and be like, hi, I'm a wrestler. Can I use your stuff? You know, well, yeah. they have like, you know, they'll bring people in for tryouts, but that doesn't necessarily mean they've signed them. I think mm-hmm. a lot of people are kind of assuming that he is going to sign because uh, when he was doing a virtual autograph signing, he oh. had said, Hey, you know, I've, I've got something really big uh, coming up. I had to transcribe that. And so <laughs> anyway, long story short, I watched like a whole, like an hour and a half of Brian Pillman jr. Um, signing his old gear wow. that he was auctioning off. And he designs all of his own gear. I had really? no idea. Yeah. yeah. So like he would talk about like the, okay, so this is the, the varsity blondes thing we did, you know, like, Part of it's the varsity club and a tribute to my dad and Steve Austin, the Hollywood blondes. And like 90% of his gear is a tribute to his dad, which is yeah, kind of aw- you know. awesome, you know? Um, but Brian, like, yeah, I, I've but, really enjoyed watching Brian Pillman so far. Cause I, I watched him uh, when he got signed to MLW, like really early in his uh-huh. career. And it was him, Teddy Hart yeah. uh, and, and uh, Davy Boy Smith Jr. were the the new Hart Foundation. That's yeah. right, the New Heart Foundation with Brian Pillman Jr. and Teddy Hart Jr. No one else. <laughs> um, but I thought that was cool, and like, you see his dad in him, right? Like, obviously, he dresses like him. I mean, basically, mm-hmm. he's doing an homage to his father, which I think is awesome. But like his father had such like that rebel spirit, you know? Mm -hmm. And I feel like Brian Pillman jr. He he's got a bit of that. Like he's not, he's not like nuts. Like his dad was. Yeah. No, but you know, he's, he's still got like a similar kind of like rebel vibe to him. Yeah. And you you hit the hand on the head in that, that, 
a lot of his stuff up to this point, including the stuff he did in the AEW and things like that, uh, oh, yeah. have been in tribute to his dad, in the yeah. shadow of his dad, this kind of thing. And one of the reasons I think WWE should sign him is because WWE is going to go one of two ways. They're going to lean into that for like 20 minutes while everyone goes, I remember Brian Pillman and we forget that he was a lunatic. And yeah. the other way is that they will strip him of it completely and give him a new persona for uh, better or I, for worse. You know what I mean? I really think he should be Brian Pillman Jr. And the difference with Brian Pillman uh, with other wrestlers, you know, like, mm. because like, you know, like they didn't strip it from Charlotte Flair. They leaned into it with Charlotte Flair. True. Um, but you know, the, with the others, they have. I say this, the reason that I say this is because I want to see what he can do when he's not under his dad's shadow. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, like I want to I, see I, what he can yeah. do with it because it was like, we talk about Cody, you know, we're going to talk about second generation and this kind of thing. Cody made a lot of really crappy stuff work before we got to see the real Cody. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And not that the Brian Pillman uh, tributes to his father are crappy or anything like that, but it's always colored what we've seen of him. And I think he's athletic yeah. and charismatic yeah. enough that he could be a real sort of star once he breaks out on his own from underneath that kind of shadow. And I think WWE is a great place to do that. Yeah, because like part of what made Brian Pillman so awesome was his creativity. Like, there were, like mm -hmm. he did a lot of really creative stuff. And he, like especially when I was listening to Pillman talk about designing all the gear, you realize like, I like that's, you know, him designing gear and using his creativity like that. It was like, okay, this that's a trait from his father. Like he gets yeah, that from definitely. his dad. Right. So you want to see what else could he do? But then mm -hmm. as someone who was a Brian Pillman fan and kind of felt like we got robbed of the, what could have been the coolest point of brian pillman's career like after the humvee mm. accident and yeah, uh, yeah. the painkiller addictions and uh, everything you know i feel like we we didn't get um you know we were robbed of a lot of brian we could have had a lot career. more brian pillman we could have had a lot more brian pillman so now and, we've yeah. got a new brian pillman <laughs> um i it's just like can we keep them? <laughs> you know, we had to, we just had to return our new DBS. Can we get a, a Pillman? We had like $2 million mans and we had to give them both back. <laughs> we can't even use the belt. They left here. <laughs> they, had to, they had to sell it. They owe some money. <laughs> some, just some uh, it's, it's been a thing. <laughs> But uh, but yeah, I would just like to see Brian Pillman Jr. Uh, while he's still sort of in his prime physically, um, yeah. get an opportunity to show us what he can do along with his legacy, just like Dirty Dom, you know. Yep. I yeah, and I I think also with with Pillman, there is some sympathy there. You know, you know, like mm. this this is a guy who lost his dad under really bad circumstances early in his life. His mom obviously went through her, her issues. You know, we all saw the dark side of the ring. But when you listen to Brian Pillman Jr. speak about his childhood, he talks about being so grateful that his aunt took him in. Talks about his mom being like a you know a, a good person who had problems. Like he doesn't complain at all, and he's you know got a lot to complain well, about. Yeah, so. I don't think anyone would begrudge him. A little bit of complaining from that from time to time, but yeah. or like no, you know, like like bitterness, you know. And yeah. he has talked about how his mom didn't want him to get into wrestling because of what it did to his dad. Mm -hmm. But it sounds it sounds like you know everybody's on board with his choice now. And so, yeah, man, mm -hmm. I I'm looking forward to what he does in NXT more than the main roster. Mainly. <laughs> that but, could and know. yeah, that'd be a great place to have him. Yeah, you know, really Brian Pillman like Jr. in NXT, I'd really like that. That would be awesome. I might so, watch it. And it's a good, like, I don't know. It's Because the Brian Pillman Sr. story is so tragic, it's cool to yeah. have, like, a good story, you know? It's a redemption a little bit, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of there redemption. Is... Oh, yeah. If okay. I may. You may. 
so normally I am not a huge fan of corporate crossovers in my wrestling matches. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. like super enjoy the fact that the Miz fought an army of zombies for some reason, because there was a video game or the dancing cinnamon toast crunch next to the ring or, <laughs> or what have you. The latter being like just weird enough that I was like, I'm not sure I'm seeing that, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, but there was one crossover this week, a bit of cross promotion that was just such gold and that was it's shark week on discovery channel Mm -hmm. and aew and discovery obviously owned by warner brothers discovery blah 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 and they had brian cage arm wrestling a guy in a shark suit who was like the mascot of shark week is that chompy chompy i think he's chompy yeah brilliant brian cage (laughs) is an unsung entertainment machine oh my god brian cage is awesome But like he should be a top star in this industry. Yes, absolutely. I agree. Like Um, he's got the physique. He's got the charm. He's got the he can talk. He can, you know, like the first time I ever saw him. He's a better entertainer than I think people give him get him credit for. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like remember him in Lucha Underground? Oh, he was so good in Lucha Underground. He killed the guy. He killed the guy (laughs) with his bare hands. The God. Of course we see him as a main eventer. He can can bring death with just a squeeze. And Undertaker's like, I guess I got one more to go. (laughs) Like, No, no, sit down, Mark. It's interesting because he was treading water for a bit in AEW and then was just like not used for a while. Mm -hmm. And I think maybe Tony Khan and the booking team kind of got into a trap with him thinking like, here's this big guy. He can only like you either use him as a main eventer or nothing. That's you don't have to do that. Like Brian Cage, if you, I would love to know what his record on Dynamite is. He doesn't. Mm-hmm. He loses way more than he wins, but he's still like, you know, he's still such an imposing presence, and you yeah. know, a guy his size doing the moves that he does, like, yeah, you know. So I, I think now that now that they've kind of realized, like, hey, you know, he doesn't have to win every match. Uh, it's easier <laughs> for them to use him. So definitely, I'd love to see him. Uh, on a, a world title run or chasing it for a while or something, you know, something like, can you, I feel like he and MJF would have a great program, just like a short, like yeah. one or two yeah, month yeah, yeah. kind of thing where just like MJF is just terrified of him. Cause he's huge. I also think you can <laughs> tweak his character a little bit. Like, do you remember when he did sort of 80 sting cosplay? I do. And, and do. he had, you know, the sting makeup and stuff like that. I was like, you could just try different things with Brian Cage and like like turn him into like the thing, the like Marvel's the thing. <laughs> just, like, you know, because he is such a like I, and actually he said this. He was like, I think some people think I'm in the wrong company. Like I should be mm. in WWE, but I'm in AEW. Um, but that's what kind of makes him unique in AEW yeah. is you this big guy with this like huge uh, like muscles. It was like, this is a WWE guy, but he wrestles in AEW style and he's, yeah. Know. And it but... might've been like a bit of a, of a Paul white influence that, that had him sort of disappear and come back and disappear and come back for a while. Mm-hmm. Cause white was always touting the value of having that big monster guy. Sure. Yeah. Using him sparingly because if you use him too much, he becomes less of an attraction. Yeah. But that's if like, yeah, so that means if you're if you're putting Brian Cage into that role, you're either putting him in world title matches or nothing. And yeah. it's like, well, and you could do the same thing with Big Bill, right? Like Big Bill is huge. Yeah, he looks, you know, good for you Big could have, Bill. Good for yeah, I know, right? Like good for Big Bill. And huh. I'm glad he's named Big Bill too, because that's a that's sort of like a throwback to '80s wrestling, where right? it's like, yeah, yeah, there's Big Bill, there's Big Bill. He drives a big truck. <laughs> He's a big man. <laughs> yeah, like they do vignettes with like him walking around like much smaller people. He like, wears big shoes. When you're this big, it's hard to get around. Everyone's <laughs> smaller. Like, yeah, like he would have. His theme song would be built. like, He's a big man. Real big. Really big yeah. man. <laughs> gets a sponsorship with like a paper towel company or something like that. Like I, I could see that. <laughs> yeah. Good. So good for big bill and, and good for Brian cage. But, yes. Well, big, big bill. Um, <laughs> calling anybody big bill talking to about someone seriously and referring to them as big bill is weird. 
Big Bill went through some hard times. <laughs> after from WWE. He did. Um, but he's he's a redemption story, right? Like I I think I think so. Yeah. When when he got released from WWE, I think he took that really hard, and he ended up moving in with DDP, and mm-hmm. like lots of people move in with DDP, and some do better than others. Jake Roberts does not have the abs that Big Bill has. No, no. Big Bill has taken to the program. Um, <laughs> and, and he got his career back. Like he 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 was down. Yeah. He worked his ass off and he got his career back. So I'm sure and- WWE would have uh, signed him. Like, you know, once he popped back up on the scene, looking super in shape and calling himself yeah. Big Bill. <laughs> well, of course, they were already writing a theme song, but um, no, I think he's the kind that would like will find his way back to WWE at some point. Yeah. Um, I felt like he always got a raw deal because the perception was always that Enzo was the entertaining one, and then he was just there to do like some cleaning of house, and then the match should be over. And I never thought that because I never warmed up to the real one. Um, <laughs> but uh, but anyways, it, it's good to see him coming back and and doing something productive and and doing it in a much happier yeah. state too yeah yeah he had uh in that in the blind eliminator tag tournament that they did it, mm-hmm. it was actually big bill and brian cage teamed up together i think oh, they, like you could i know like that would be an okay team like a regular team kind of like a, a new age uh twin ta- twin titans twin, or titans or... Uh, they were the twin towers but uh, that was before <laughs> uh, a modern age uh, skyscraper, uh, natural disaster skyscrapers. Sure, wasn't there a skyscrapers uh, team? Probably, yeah. I think Kevin Nash was in the skyscrapers with somebody. I don't know. I'm sure Kevin Nash doesn't even know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Kevin Nash strikes me as somebody who would not remember large chunks of his career, not because he was like on drugs or or drinking a lot, but just because, like, who cares? Yeah, he just decided not to remember it. <laughs> I don't need to remember Oz. What, what am I missing if I forget Oz? Yeah, Vinny who? Eh, whatever. Wolf. Uh, okay, so Brian Pillman being in NXT would be awesome, but there's somebody else in NXT that I would really like to talk about. Who's that, um, Ian? Do you watch much NXT like when Dominic's not on it? Oh, no. No. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that's <laughs> uh, most wrestling fans are kind of uh, like that, but. I, you, and so, it's and, sad because I used to be a like I watched more NXT than I watched Raw or SmackDown, but not no more. Oh, before AEW, I mean NXT was awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, so, <laughs> so NXT is definitely a show now where like I I watch some of it and I fast forward mm-hmm. through a fair bit. Uh, I now stop and watch all segments involving Chase U. Chase ah. U is a act that on paper should be absolutely <laughs> terrible and is somehow like really fun. Okay. And that seems to happen quite a bit in wrestling, you know, like even judgment day on paper is not great. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, like we're going to have some wacky goth kids. <laughs> um, all right. So uh, Thea Hale is a member of chase you. And she actually, so I, trying to find out this background info on Thea Hale. And there's not much because she hasn't been alive long. Oh, like she's, she's only been, uh, like, I wonder what I want to say is like, how's she doing it being alive? Well, so far so good, but okay. you know, same with me. Like I, I, I plan on living forever so far. So good. Right. How, yeah. how old is she? she or how many is, years well, young is she? She's 19 years old now, but she signed when she was oh. 18. Oh, so she, just makes me sad. Like that's so young. Like you, it's like, how have you even had the time to practice this? Um, I've had like forty plus years to practice it, and I ain't done nothing. <laughs> I, I, I can't so, do anything. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. So there, she, there are some kids. Is that kid in AEW that they just that you know? He oh, just Nick had his Wayne. Debut. Yeah, yeah, that he's like an eighteen-year-old phenom as well. So I guess, I guess it can happen where you're just oh, Paige. Yeah. Maybe even you could look at Paige. She was very young when she got. Well, a lot of especially second mm-hmm. generation wrestlers, they mm-hmm. start training, training like they're bouncing yeah. around in mats at a really early age, right? And Thea Hale was a gymnast, which lots of gymnasts, like it's, 
Yeah. So I'm sure it's like, she was really athletic, but the thing that makes her so good is she just does this really like her character is just really like intense and energetic and super into everything that chase you does. She just does it with such intensity that I love it. And <laughs> um, anyway, she, she's like my unsung wrestler of the week in some okay. ways. So, like here's a wrestler that you might not be watching, but maybe you should check out cause she's pretty funny. All right. And then this this weekend she wrestles Tiffany Stratton at Great American Bash for the NXT Championship. Mm-hmm. And I yeah. I yeah. I would like her to win that match. I plan on watching that match uh similar to the way we were talking about before where it's like I'm going to watch this how they want me to watch it. So I'm going <laughs> to get emotionally invested. I'm going to I'll be like, "Oh, Thea Hale, she deserves this championship." Oh no, Tiffany Stratton's cheating and then oh, I'm really upset. This is just an okay American Bash. <laughs> <laughs> I I will say this about that though. I am happy to see NXT getting like an event again. Yeah. yeah. Because ever since AEW and and NXT started like giving their their quarterly shows on TV subtitles, I feel oh, like man. it's really lessened my excitement for events. <laughs> you know, yeah. like well, yeah. I just saw like Halloween Havoc. I don't need to watch a pay-per-view. It's right there. <laughs> you know, I feel like they need to have their own shows and just let, let yeah, the shows and like outside shows. of the performance center too. So you have like a few thousand fans rather than like a couple hundred. Or yeah. Yeah. And like, not all the fans are like painted on those boards. Right. And, right. Yeah. And you know, it, it always feels special when there's a pay-per-view or a premium live event premium or, or whatever event. they're calling them these days, you know, like that, that's something like, Oh, it's, it's out of the norm. I got to set time aside from that. Whereas if it's like, Oh, the great American bash is just the regular NXT thing. And then tomorrow, Oh, they're gonna yeah. do another one next week too. That's, that's, that's great. You know, it just, it just lessens it for me. Um, yeah. But I am glad to see them getting one outside yeah like there's legitimate stuff worth watching on nxt not a lot um but uh, it's very developmental now you can tell that it is it is very developmental yeah um but it's definitely improved a lot since it was rebranded like remember when they rebranded it and had that like splash of color stuff and it was definitely a tv show created by people in their 60s but aimed at teenagers you know yeah it's like Cora Jade, you're gonna ride your skateboard to the ring because it'll be totally you know, rad. Kids love skateboards. Page me, homie. <laughs> yeah, like the entire show was that Steve Buscemi meme. You know, yeah. like hey, Hello, other kids. kids. <laughs> yeah, that, that was like it's not that bad now. Like NXT is so much better mm-hmm. now than than that. That was terrible. It's actually got some decent stuff worth watching now. Well, that's good. So one thing, Carmelo Hayes is a champion. He's good. Ron Breaker's good. Um, Dirty Dom is the North American champion. Dirty Dom's seen. on the show, so big time ratings. But yeah, they the NXT ratings have gone up a lot, and it's because they're they're negotiating their TV rights deals with mm-hmm. people who want to pay them. Uh, so I think the, the idea the is get NXT's ratings up, so more Dom, more Dom, more dominant. Why not? Okay. Give me the Dominic line. Um, yeah, and, and the best part is that like one of these days he's going to go too far and either Priest or Finn Balor is just going to rip his heart out and it's <laughs> going to be amazing. Like it's going to be perfect. Did you ever see the videos they were doing? Well, the, the videos eventually led to Dom going to prison. The one yes. where him and him and Rio would just show up at every holiday. Ah. Oh. I, I they've stopped them since he went to jail, but well, um, I jail that's too bad. Like you could just do one of those a week with whatever random holiday might be out there. Like you know, even do like Canadian holidays that aren't uh, yeah uh, celebrated in the states. Yeah, like uh, civic holiday, uh, family day. I love that we we have family day in Ontario. We couldn't find like any person worthy of being honored. So we're just like family. Screw single people. I don't celebrate family day. Supposed to get married and have kids. It's become too commercial. You know, (laughs) when I was a kid, we could gather around the family tree and sing family carols. It was one thing, but now it's just all about stuff. 
It's like Hallmark got their greedy little fingers into Family Day. And we, it used to be about just not going to school or work. <laughs> now we got to do both. Uh, our our little timer clicked up up here. So. Our little timer. So we only have like one other topic that we want to uh, hit. Mm -hmm. um, I think we've got everything else. So I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, Willow Nightingale versus Athena. Mm -hmm. This was on the Ring of Honor Death Before Dishonor show on Friday night. So Ring of Honor is great, by the way. Yeah, I, yeah. It's, it's like a, everyone's it's... little brother. Everyone just likes it. It's never bad, right? And yeah. th that was the case with Ring of Honor before. Like, they don't take a lot of risks, and they just kind of do wrestling. It's, yeah. It's, so, it's, yeah. A, it's the perfectly cromulent little wrestling show. Like, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Um, But this was like, okay, so Friday nights now are ridiculous for wrestling because you've got SmackDown, you've got Rampage, and now they throw, like, a pay-per-view on there. So it's kind of like, I, I don't even re like i wasn't that enthusiastic about this ring of honor pay-per-view plus like it all seemed like it was put together last minute because it was supposed to be claudio castagnoli mm -hmm. defending the title against mark brisk well they'd been building a storyline between mm -hmm. claudio and eddie kingston then eddie kingston gets booked in the g1 so they change it to claudio versus mark briscoe then mark briscoe's hurt and they're like i don't know pack sure we got packed this week <laughs> give him pack that was a journey. So I wasn't man. like super enthusiastic about it. Um, and then they had like Willow Nightingale versus Athena, but this was a match. We, we actually just saw this in the semifinals of the Owen Hart tournament. So it's not like I was like, finally Willow <laughs> Nightingale versus Athena. They had the best match of the week. That I saw. <laughs> anyway, like, or at least like arguably one of the best matches of the week. It was like an homage to women's wrestling. Mm -hmm. It, and FTR does this a lot. They do like basically matches that are or homages to tag team wrestling where they'll do like uh, different teams moves. Like they do power and glory suplex and splash. Yeah. They do the Steiner's stuff. They, you know, they, they yeah. always do Bret Hart's entire moveset. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah, there's a few people do doing that of, these days. <laughs> they do a lot of matches with like callbacks to like the history of tag team wrestling what Athena and Willow Nightingale did was like a callback to a lot of like women's wrestlers during a period where it was like women's wrestling was mm -hmm. sort of struggling for a spot, you know? Mm -hmm. And especially in ring of honor, like ring of honor, never like the original ring of honor, never put much emphasis in women's wrestling at all. But uh, they had actually I just got the list uh here that i wanted to and through the magic of television i can just edit this part <laughs> yeah so um so there was all these different moves and she put this out on well uh the twitter account aew gold tweet uh tweeted this out and then hmm. athena responded to it but these were like callback moves so hmm. uh, Daisy Hayes, who was a, a Ring of Honor wrestler for a while, did her mind trap. Did Sarah Del Rey's Royal Butterfly. Did mm -hmm. Sumi Sakai's Smash Mouth. Sumi Sakai, uh, like the last time Ring of Honor tried to put a women's div division together, it was basically like three women and Sumi Sakai. <laughs> uh, so did one of her moves. Did Alice in Danger's Shimmering Warlock. Did Mischief's o Obliteration. And then Athena responded that she also did a reverse DDT that Mickey James did when she was known as Alexis Lurie before she went to WWE. Uh, also did a Franken screamer that that's a move from Daphne. And of course we, mm -hmm. we lost Daphne not too long ago. Uh, and that like talk about women's wrestlers. Unsung I really enjoyed hero. during. Yeah. She, she really was like Daphne was so she, I mean, the the biggest parts of her career were sort of the end of WCW and she was with uh, David Flair mm -hmm. um, and Crowbar. Canyon, so, yeah. I th yeah, I thought she did some really cool stuff there. But then she went to TNA and she actually got over really big in TNA when she was, Taz would always call her zombie hot or something like that because you could still objectify uh, mm, yeah. women then. And, yeah, um, I mean, it was still bad and harmful, but- uh, Yeah, well, yeah they just did it more. 
they they just did it more right um so i thought that was really cool so you could so this match had all these callbacks to the uh, you know and i i just thought that that was such a cool thing to do and that's why it was like my favorite wrestling match to watch this week in a week where there was like blood and guts and all this other cool yeah, stuff yeah. uh athena versus willow nightingale stuck out to me as the the one match i wanted to go hey that match was really awesome it gets five that match was really awesome out of five Yes, I will like. give it uh, on my official rating scale. I will give it three four leaf clovers, a horseshoe, like 12 leaves, and an elf's foot. Oh, so that's a good foot. score. That an is a good score. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, an elf foot, like when you quantify it mathematically, very, very large. <laughs> very, uh, like to scale, it's, it's like, pretty big. Whoa, know? yeah, you don't yeah. just give away elf's feet. No, and don't even talk about their scrotums. Oh, I, I I don't think I've seen a match yet that's worth a, an elf scrotum. <laughs> that's like one maybe of maybe rare... Brett Austin at WrestleMania 13, <laughs> maybe, maybe. But even though they like, I'll give like I'll give you one elf's ball. I give you an elf scrotum, but it's hairless. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Which is just unsettling enough to make it a good ending to this show. <laughs> We got like three minutes left because we use the cheap version of Zoom. What uh, <laughs> what wrestling things can we we get in in, in three minutes? Uh, what else is cool in wrestling right now? Um, uh, uh, Hurricane Rana's they're neat. They're they're good. Uh, I I like it when Ricky Starks does the old school Undertaker thing, except for he kind of dances on the top rope. That's cool. That that's always fun. Chris Jericho's hair gets more and more like my aunt's. That's neat. Uh, the way Christian Cage will belittle a uh, local sports team. I like that. I think that's good. Except for when it's sports team I cheer for. And he knows what will hurt. Luchasaurus? Let's, let's just say Luchasaurus. Is there Luchasaurus? anything better than that? The existence of Luchasaurus. The existence of Luchasaurus. A half man, half dinosaur. I do like what he's doing uh, with Christian where... <laughs> Christian is the TNT champion because yes. Luchasaurus. Christian is the perfect Owen Hart heel. Like yes, except he he's is. like a little bit more serious. Like like right now he's more serious. Yeah, um, yeah. But but back when uh, like Edge and Christian in WWE, he was very Owen Hart there. Like, uh, <laughs> oh, definitely. And even yeah. you know today he he still he goes to the classic wells. Do you know what I mean? Like he's oh, the yeah, man yeah, yeah. manager who tries to trip the guy or like you know, tries to shift away the, the steps or something when he's trying to run or, you know, just, just something sneaky and underhanded. I love it. And I knew when he, so I was at the AEW stuff in Toronto when he made fun of the Leafs for going out in the first round and Christian, like I know Christian Ooh. is a huge Leafs fan. Yeah. Right? He knew how much that would hurt. He knew he's like, what can I yeah. say to Leafs fans? That's really going to like, you drive can tell a he's a true it. Leafs fan because he got up there in public and destroyed the team. Yeah, exactly. Words. Much like that's much how like you your show. dad and, and, and his fandom. Uh, <laughs> that's how you show true then, love for something. And then I'm not sure if it was the Knicks or if it was collision or forbidden door, but the next time he was in Toronto, he talked about how, well, yeah, they made it past the first round, but then they choked against Florida. And then he talked about Kawhi Leonard leaving Toronto. It's like he knew all the things about <laughs> Toronto sports fandom to just to just hit us with. He like, knows us he, so well. And I thought I was like, that's not nice. He sacrificed our feelings for for him being over. What a, a single feel. tear was rolling down his cheek. You didn't see it, but it was there. We're down to so this is our last minute. Less than a minute. Less than a minute to appreciate things in wrestling. I mean, I definitely appreciate Christian Cage. Uh, I, like, I, I, I like the ropes. I like the ropes, right? Um, I like the apron. It's the hardest part of the ring, I hear. Commentary was a great idea. Really livened up the show. Yeah, like people talking uh, yeah. about the 